Hello Reloaders and welcome back to the channel. This is the CS 7.1 build series and today we're going to be covering the assembly of the classifier module. Let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to fit the camera housing into the classifier base and it's easiest to do this before you install everything. We want a nice tight snug fit. But if for some reason we can't get a nice tight snug fit, we have a set screw we can add. The set screw is an M3 by 20 millimeter screw. Once that screw is in place, you should have a fairly tight fit between the classifier base and the camera housing. You'll want to make fine adjustments here and make sure you don't over tighten this screw and damage the housing body. Next we're going to install the insert, which is an M10 by 1 to an M8 by 1. And there's a couple ways to do this. The first way, if you happen to have an M8 by 1 bolt, you can actually thread this insert in. Now this bolt would have to be threaded all the way down. Once you get that threaded all the way in place, you can use a standard wrench to thread the rest of the insert in. You'd want to leave the insert sticking out about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more. Um, if you try to push the insert all the way through, you're going to bottom it out and have other problems. But there's an easier way to do this if you don't have the bolt available. That's right, we're just going to heat it up and push it in, just as we would do with a standard brass insert. And you can see I'm going to push it in and leave a little bit sticking out here. Uh, we'll want to make sure that it's perpendicular, that it's straight up and down. Sometimes you can just use your bolt um, or a rod to make sure that that's in pretty straight. I'm going to just stick my bolt in and check it to make sure we have it aligned properly. Next we're going to install the drop feed proximity sensor. So the first thing we're going to need to do is take these two nuts off. There's not really enough room for them once you have the motor installed and they're not needed. As you'll see it takes quite a bit of torque to get this thing threaded all the way in. So we have no worries of it coming out. Now it's just a simple matter of threading this in. Once I get to the point where I can no longer do it by hand, I'll wrap a little piece of tape around and use the pliers to thread it in further. And I want to thread this in until the face of the proximity sensor is just below flush with the surface. For this particular case, I'm going to go just a little bit further because I want to demonstrate what happens or, or the issue you'll run into if this uh, is too high. So we'll see that a little bit later. Next we're going to insert our M6 by 80 cap head screw. I'm using the drill for this. You just want to make sure if you use a drill that you either set the clutch low or that you slow way down towards the end. You don't want to strip out the 3D printed part and you want this to sit fairly tight. I think I should also mention that I chose the cap head screw on purpose. The hex head bolt took up a little bit too much space and bled over into the hole for the camera so I couldn't put the camera in without grinding a little bit off of the bolt. And so I found the cap head screws work perfectly for this. Now it's time to install the motor. I really like these stepper online motors. They seem to work really well and I haven't had any issues with them yet. These screws are M3 by 12 and should drop in place. If your print is on the small side, you might have to push these through with a little bit of force. I want to start by making sure the motor is pushed all the way to the back of the slots. This gives me enough room to drop everything in and actually generally that's the best fit. If your parts are on the small side you can always push the motor forward a little bit until you get good gear engagement. When you're done it should look something like this. I'm once again going to push those screws, the motor mount, as far back as I can before I tighten everything down. Next, we're going to install the sorter drop nozzle. This is an optional part and it comes with the caliber specific kits. It should sit just below flush 
And what it does is it serves to reduce the diameter of the drop hole and allow the brass to be guided more um, fluidly into the sorter. And so this is generally a tight fit, but we have a set screw as well that we can add here. This set screw is an M3 by 30, and you're gonna have to screw it almost all the way in to get tension on the drop nozzle. I'll screw it in the rest of the way once I get the right bit on, just so I make sure that I don't over tighten and break the nozzle. Now we're going to install the tension cam axle screw. This is an M6 by 30 cap screw and we're going to insert it from the bottom. My fingers aren't that strong so I will use my drill. Slow down at the end, you don't want to strip this one out just tight. At this point we're going to install the tension cam shim. This part, if it's, t if it's too tight, you're going to have a heck of a time getting it on. You might just be better off printing it at a 101%. Um, as it is, it should thread on by hand. If it's too tight, you can use a pair of pliers. Just try not to scratch up the part or it won't make a very good axle. It should be pretty much flush to the top when you're done. Now we're going to install the tension cam spring mount point. And we're gonna thread this from the bottom. This screw is an M3 by 20 and we're gonna screw it flush to the base. Next we're going to install the M6 cam stop. This screws in from the top and should be nearly flush to the bottom or the bottom of the screw should be flush to the base when it's screwed in. This is an M6 screw which stops the cam from over travel. Next we're going to install the tension cam. Before we put it on, we need to add an O-ring to it. So the right size O-ring is somewhere between 15 and 17. I'm going to take a 16. This simply stretches over the cam and you'll see a notch on one side. Now that the o-ring's installed, we can just push this down over the axle. But I almost forgot. Because this part is blue, and we need things to be black on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and paint this part with my Sharpie. Now we can install the tension cam onto the axle, and make sure the movement is free here. We can see no blue when we turn it over, so I think we'll be okay there. Next I need to install the extension spring. I buy these big assortments of things because I never know what I'm going to need. In this case I'm going to end up using the 5.55 by 25.4 extension, which I found gives just the right amount of tension on the cam. I found this ring can be a bit of a fit so I use a pair of pliers to open it up so it slips over the rod that's on the tension cam. Even then it can be a little bit of a pain to get on there. So once you slide the spring onto the mount you can put a little nut on that screw and that will keep the spring from flying off. And that's fine but this little nut is crazy to deal with, especially if you need to take the tension off the cam for caliber changes and things like that. 
So I actually think a better idea is to file a notch into the screw. And this is how my machines are. I simply take a triangle file and then just put a groove in it about two thirds of the way up. Now that that's done, it's easy now to change the spring to take it off, to take tension off the cam if need be. Now we're going to install the feed wheel. These are caliber specific and we're putting a bearing which has a ID of 6 millimeter and an OD of 19 millimeter. This feed wheel is a 9 millimeter feed wheel. As I said before, they're caliber specific. We're going to put the wheel on the shaft with the gear side up. Then we'll slide the tension cam into the slot and connect the spring. Then all we have to do is lock down the wheel with a nut. I'm using a lock nut that I've heated up so it spins a little bit easier. I don't want to over tighten this or it will make the wheel hard to turn. Now one thing I'm going to show you is the wheel doesn't turn and I mentioned earlier if you have the feed sensor too high you'll run into this situation where the feed sensor is catching on the wheel. Rather than force it just back it off a little bit until that wheel turns smoothly. You shouldn't feel any engagement to the feed sensor. So I'm almost there. Still a little bit of a catch. Probably another turn would do it. Maybe a half turn. And we're good. We're smooth. At this point the wheel should turn fairly easily with nothing dragging on it. If it is dragging, back the nut off a little bit until it spins freely. There should be very little play or wobble in the system. Now we'll install the feed homing sensor. And it's secured to the base with two M3 screws. Length is usually somewhere between five and seven millimeters. If everything's aligned correctly here, the sensor should trigger just before it centers into the hole. You can make small adjustments by moving the sensor in its mount holes. Now we're going to install the drive gear. And before we do that, we have to install the motor flange. So we want to make sure that the flange slides all the way down. Some of these have come with a burr and I've had to use a chamfering tool to take a edge off the, the top there. So I do that test first. The flange will sit in the recessed side of the gear and then you'll run M3 screws through the holes once they're aligned. I also recommend using an M3 nut to attach the screws to the flange. This keeps everything nice and secure and tight. So now we're ready to mount the gear onto the motor. And you just need to align the teeth and level the gear to the top of the feed wheel. Now at this point, we just need to tighten the set screws on the coupling flange. You'll want to make sure one of the set screws is aligned with the flat on the motor shaft. That's somewhat important. Last, you'll want to check to make sure you have good engagement and there's nothing hanging up. Everything is working smoothly. So one of the last steps before we install the mount is to install a light shade. And the light shade's purpose is to block overhead lights from going into the camera hole. And so um, you could use any color you want. If you use a color other than black, you need to blacken the bottom of it. Once you have the nut tightened down, you'll go ahead and swing the light shade over the top of the camera hole and the tension cam. 
And then we want to check and make sure there's no color but black in there. I'll put a piece of brass in the system and make sure we get a, a good image. Make sure everything functions and feeds. One problem I see is that the filament is very shiny in that camera hole area. So before I install the camera, I'll take a piece of sandpaper and rough that up so there's not so much reflection. On final inspection of the system, I saw that the tension cam stop was a little low, so I backed it out a little bit just because I want that O-ring engaging with the side of the tension cam. So it wasn't exactly flush after all. So the final step in this build is to install the pull mount. The universal pull mount is used by all three components, the sorter and the top feed. In this case, it actually mounts directly to it via two M6 by 25 screws. You probably don't want to over tighten here. I ended up tightening it more than I wanted to but it works fine. And that's pretty much it. You now have a completed classifier base ready to install on the pole. Well, I hope you're enjoying this build as much as I have, and I'll catch you in the next video.